post-grad life. <laughs> Thank you. Doing my best. <laughs> Doing my best. So let's kick off our questions for you. Um, first of all, tell us about your time and your life and your experience while you were a student at Smith. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about what you studied and um, how did your path from Smith, from Smith bring you to, or maybe even possibly away from your current position and your career goals? Totally. So I would say that my time at Smith academically has been very circuitous. So I came in feeling very gung-ho on the pre-med track and I actually pursued that for three years. So freshman year, sophomore year, and like most of junior year. Um, so by the time I made the pivot into art history, I had done most of the pre-med classes and I'll say more like most generally, and I'm happy to get into the like interiority of it all later, but I think being held academically at a place like Smith allowed me to have the courage to make that kind of pivot that does seem quite dramatic, like science to art history. Um, and I'd also like to say like, while I was reflecting on my own conceptions of what research means when I was a first year, I frankly had no idea what research <laughs> meant. Um, and I remember like older students would be talking about this research that they were doing and it always sounded like cool and exciting and all of that, but I never knew what that meant in practice. So I would like to just start by saying research is when you like follow your curiosity and you find a question that keeps surfacing again and again and again to the point where you can't necessarily avoid the question anymore and you decide to pursue it in some capacity. And that's where the libraries and the special collections come in. So once you identify your question, you then have to start thinking about how you're gonna answer it, what kind of resources you're gonna need to answer the question. And that's where Namisha, Maureen, Kat, et cetera, all come into the picture. So back to my academic path. <laughs> So I, yeah, like I said, was studying pre-med and kind of like, I guess my first conception of research in that kind of context felt very um, sterile and it felt very clinical and it felt very um, almost numb because in science labs, you are not only encouraged, but required to write and speak from this kind of like lens of quote objectivity which my Africana studies later kind of like problematized the whole idea of objectivity and we can get into that later as well. But in science labs, like you're not only in this like cold fluorescently lit room wearing these white coats. So like chromatically it feels very sterile but also like the methods that you're employing um, kind of require you to withdraw your own emotions, your own intuition and frankly, your own curiosity from the question at hand. So that was kind of my introduction to research is like, what is this molecule going to do to this molecule most generally? Um, but then during the first semester of my sophomore year, I took my first Africana studies class and it changed my life. That department became my academic home in so many ways on campus. The professors are people who are so near and dear to me still and people who I still keep in touch with. Just like quick Africana studies department plug. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, there will be many more plugs throughout the conversation. But um, the first class I took was uh, history of African-American people up until 1960. So we stopped right around the civil rights movement and I did not grow up in the US. So I never learned American history. I never took like a push or anything like that. So my position was unique in that regard already. So all of this is to say that the first time I learned American history was through the black perspective, which I think is a very special thing that I'm still reflecting on the many ways that that um, carries over into my life and into my work now. But there was something so unbelievably pleasurable and rewarding and rigorous about studying um, myself ultimately and like studying the people and the world and the culture that I hold very near and dear. There's something special about having a mirror held up to you and kind of like 
being able to discern what that reflection will look like and what that reflection will mean rather than in a science class where the mirror is held up to you and it, it dictates what you should be seeing of yourself when you look into it, if that makes any sense. Um, so as I continue to fall deeper and deeper and deeper in love with Africana studies as a discipline with the professors in the department and all of that, I actually kind of started to move away from my science classes. I would feel so excited about the readings that I would do for Africana and then have to kind of like haul out my science notebooks and like slam them on the desk and kind of like really command a level of discipline and focus that didn't feel like it came naturally to me after I discovered Africana studies. But I, like I imagine many of us in the room are like as a bright person of color, it's kind of like the careers that feel available and possible to you. It's like the lawyer, doctor, engineer kind of situation. Um, and I wouldn't say my parents necessarily pressured me into that path. I pressured myself into that path. Um, and I think in addition to obviously all the academic work that I did at Smith, the environment and the community both academic and otherwise allowed me to start dissolving all of this kind of like perfectionism that I came with to campus and this like desire to impress that I came with to campus and like kind of allowed me to actually start asking myself what made me happy, which might sound like a very simple thing, but especially as a woman of color, that's not something that is handed to us, to me on a platter. I did not grow up with the messaging of like, you know, anything is possible for you and it doesn't matter which direction you take to arrive there. Um, but I really do believe that taking Africana studies classes, again, like not only fortified me academically, but also in all of these other ways that I still carry with me. So basically I stumbled into an exhibition called Black Refractions at the Smith College Museum of Art. And it kind of happened on a whim. I was on um, vacation for Christmas break. So in between the first and the second semester of junior year, this is like right before COVID went down. Um, and I got this email from the SCMA of the promotional material for Black Refractions. I'm just gonna show you cause I have the book, give me a sec. Um, so, this is what came in my email, this image. It's called Lottie Mama by Barkley Hendricks. I just gotta give her another second because I love this painting. And I, yeah, saw this in my email, kind of on a whim was like, that's a cool painting. Like it was very superficial. I was like, this is just a beautiful work of art. Signed up for a tour of the exhibition and happened to be one of the only people who signed up for the tour at that time which also meant coincidentally that I had a one-on-one -on -one walkthrough with the curator of the museum. And the exhibition was on two floors. We made it through maybe half of one floor because I was asking her so many questions and just felt everything inside of me light up in this very, very, um, this very special way that I think I'm still trying to articulate for myself like a year and a half later, but it became very clear, like every cell in my body was singing and screaming that like the art world is the direction that I needed to go down and that art history really was um, my calling and specifically studying black contemporary artists. So went home, started Googling things, found out that the Studio Museum in Harlem, which is where all of the work in that exhibition came from, is run by a Smithy. And then <laughs> started to do a little bit more digging. Her name is Thelma Golden, by the way. You should Google her and read about her if you have time to do that. And if you're curious, she is a powerhouse and she's amazing. Um, but like kept digging, then found out that Kimberly Drew, another person you should definitely Google and read about if you don't know of them already, is also a Smithy and started to feel like I was stepping into this really formidable lineage um, that made it feel a lot I don't know, a lot easier to like make that kind of pivot and call my parents and be like, so I uh, did all the pre-med classes, should probably start studying for the MCAT now, but I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna do this. Um, and like feeling as though there was a community on campus at Smith to support me, i.e. my professors, Maureen, Namisha, et cetera, 
but also this like vast community of black women specifically in the art world that were there to kind of like cradle me and take me in and nurture me on the other side of the like gates that we walk through after graduation. Um, yeah, just like made it feel so much easier to kind of like step into what my path is and like kind of, you know, we all have impulses and intuitive kind of ticklings or whisperings that happen, but I really do believe that it takes support and community to be able to follow those things. So that was kind of a meandering answer, but that that was my academic life at Smith. And then after I saw that exhibition about a month later, we were all sent home for COVID and that kind of like obliterated the opportunity to do internships or have kind of like formal professional experience to then like go out into the world with, because remember this is like right before my senior year that all of this is going down, which I will admit was very nerve wracking. But then the Cromwell Fellowship, which I hope um, many of you will eventually apply for if that's of interest to you, that kind of like fell into my lap as well at the perfect time. And I used that opportunity to figure out what research meant for me. Cause again, I was coming from this like you're gonna pipette this into this and then you're gonna observe what happens. Obviously it was more complicated than that, but like that's basically what was happening to this like, okay, so now I need to like read books and find like journals and things to answer my questions. It was like definitely new territory for me. And I remember sending Namisha an email that was like, help me, like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to find these resources um, and Namisha, kind of like schooled me on how to use these databases. So that's the bird's eye view. Camille, thank you so much for walking us through that. And thank you too for this um, this frame that you've given us as of research is something that's fueled by your own experience, by your own questions and your own creativity. And that, that is, if, if we listen to that, it becomes an opportunity. So I'm wondering if you could tell us more about your life of research, your life of research now. How did you learn to do research? Um, were there any people, resources, experiences that helped you on the way? You talked a little bit about the Cromwell Fellowship. I'd love to hear more about that. And then the other thing that you mentioned that I'd love to dig into more is um, the role of the self and maybe, maybe you would even say the myth of objectivity that we might want to think about when we're thinking about research. So more about my life as a researcher, more about Cromwell Fellowship, and then like conceptually, what does like identity play a role in in research? Yeah, and also just any any tips about how you learned how to do research? Was there anyone, what resources at Smith would you use in order to learn how to do research? Totally. So. I would say, first of all, I think it's important to know, and my former advisor, Professor Ng, has been very adamant on like making sure his students know this, but every single professor at Smith does research. Every single one. And like likely folks who aren't necessarily like professors also engage in research. Um, so just to put that out there, like your professors are doing like 50% teaching and then 50% will go home or go back to their office or whatever and do their research. So one of the biggest resources was literally going into my professor's offices and being like, so what do you research? And like, how do you do that? Because the other thing that I learned through taking the methods of inquiry class in the Africana studies department, which is literally a class to learn how to do research is that there are a number of different methods you can employ to kind of like reach the question that you're trying to answer. And the method you employ will depend on the kind of answer that you want to come to. So one thing that we spoke a lot about in that class is kind of like, and I will also say that like all of this is informed by black feminism. Like everything that I do as an Africana study student is shaped by black feminism. So one thing that my professors really urged me to understand is that it's not necessarily just about going to the library, going to the special collections, which are tremendous resources. It's also about like bearing witness to how you feel as you're trying to answer this question and like allowing that to be evidence as well. And I think that 
is something that I learned from Professor Ng from asking him to tell me about his research because he studies what he calls the politics of grief and the politics of grievance and thinking about, um, yeah, what it means that Black people have mourned in public as a political strategy for decades. And he uses archives so thinking about like images from the like era of the black power movement photographs thinking about like archival documents that are more so like perhaps court documents or case files and things like that so the first thing i would do if you're curious or like interested in doing research later is going to your favorite professors or the ones who kind of light you up when you're in class and ask them literally say tell me about your research because the other thing is that if you're a professor, you're doing this because you have decided for the rest of your life to answer these questions. So this is something that they'll be very excited to talk to you about. So that's the first thing. Um, then the second thing is starting to peruse specifically the Hillier Library contents, because I've also prepared a list of books for you if you will like want somewhere to start that we'll send you at the end. Um, but Hillier has a number of books that are not necessarily like as academic, like something that you can bring home and sit on your bed with your friends and just leaf through. Like we have that massive Rihanna book that Rihanna published, for example, and like a number of other really, really exciting um, like exhibition catalogs and art magazines and things like that. And that was another huge resource, just like finding things on campus, almost like coincidentally and just finding time to leaf through them. Like I would say at this point, at like the nascent stage of your Smith career, like just give yourself over to your curiosity is like the biggest advice I can give. And the way that that actually looks in practice can differ in a whole number of ways. But I think like starting to just keep an eye out for books, people, students, professors that you have questions for is a really, really great place to start because I think, again, like curiosity is the way that you're going to get to all of these questions. On a more practical note, I would say that I also didn't pay as much attention as I wish I had when we had the library orientations for our individual classes. So there will be moments if you take a language class, for instance, or even an art history class where like Namisha or Maureen will probably visit your class or another librarian and like literally show you how to use the databases. Um, pay attention, <laughs> pay attention during those sessions because finding ways to kind of like filter through, like let's say you want to find anything that was written about this Barclay Hendricks painting between the years of like 2010 and 2020. Like if you pay attention during your, those sessions, you'll know how to do that. And when you put in that initial search, you won't get 15,000 like overwhelming search results which is definitely the kind of bag I was in at the start of my um, thesis research. I will also say though that my experience um, was quite unique because I didn't have access to a physical library for the entirety of my research process, um, which twofold like obviously would have liked to tangibly like handle the materials I was using. And I also didn't have the opportunity to kind of just have those serendipitous moments where you're wandering through the library and you see something and you're like, oh, that looks cool. Let me go kind of like discover what that's all about. But then the other thing is that, I mean, Smith has digitized so many of our books and so many of our resources that um, it still felt possible for me to answer my questions. So that is to say that you can even like, I know Kimberly's book, um, This Is What I Know About Art, which I think is the first book on that list is in ebook form as well. Um, so those are all really great places to start, I think. And then obviously like go to the Cromwell Fellowship info sessions that the Africana Studies Department holds and also seek out opportunities like the Khan Fellowship and the Mellon Mays Fellowship because and those will come later. I think you can apply for Khan at the end of your sophomore year and you can apply for Mellon as well, I think at that same time. Um, but those are also really great kind of ways to begin experimenting and figuring out how to ask those questions with direct support and mentorship from your professors. Um, because again, research just feels like such a nebulous, amorphous kind of term. Um, 
what else? What other like concrete advice do I have? The other thing is that Smith has um, archived all of the theses that past students have written about. So if you're ever curious about a particular subject or anything like that, um, that is also a place I would check out. And the other thing about Smithies is obviously we're like very excited to share any advice and help and tips that we can with younger students. So like you can always email us, you can always reach out to alums if you need help in that regard. And then the last thing I'll say is that the library also has, and Namisha, remind me if this is the right term, but like course outlines. You know what I'm talking about? The like, is that what it's called? Course outline? Are you talking about the like library guides that are online? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Library guide. Okay. So yes, each class that is on the kind of like catalog, all the classes that you might be registered for have a library guide which have a number of resources that are kind of like in excess of the syllabus that you're given, but a really great place to start if you want to read more about a particular topic. Um, I used to have a lot of fun just literally kind of seeing even what was on that list, even if I didn't necessarily like read a bunch of it. So those are kind of like the concrete tips I have. I'm gonna take a sip of water one sec. I think that is all amazing advice. Um, and I think you're being so generous with your with your knowledge. And I think it's really special that students that are Bridgies are hearing from a fellow Bridgie alum um, about how you navigated and what your path was like. So I think that's it's just really special to have that here today. Um, so another thing that we were wondering about is, as we all here know very well, um, Black, Indigenous, and women of color are all extremely underrepresented in academia and especially in art research. So what kinds of things empowered you to pursue your research at Smith, either through writing your thesis or other projects or your what you're pursuing now? What are the things that inspired you to keep moving forward and to really embody these types of values that you're talking about today? Totally. So. First of all, facts like, yes, the art world, it can be an incredibly intimidating field because I think it kind of moves under this guise of like liberalism and moves under this guise of like, we're talking about art. So there's no racism here. And like, there's no sexism here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which can make it more insidious. And so the kind of, um, strategies that I've used to continue affirming my right, not only to be in that space, but to like shape it and transform it um, are absolutely derivative of experiences that I had at Smith. So that first Africana studies class again, um, genuinely was one of the most revelatory experiences because it taught me that not only was my like existence every day out in the world um, incredibly valuable, but also um, the history from which I emerged is incredibly valuable and like worthy of study and worthy of celebration and worthy of refinement and again, transformation. So I think it's really important to take classes that reflect your own history. And I don't mean that in a like cliche way because I also understand through my Africana studies um, experience that blackness is multiple, right? Like in one class, the, this first class we were studying the US, but then there are all of these other classes where we were studying the Caribbean, where my family is from and like the continent, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it felt very important for me to um, feel reflected in all of those ways. And so I, first of all, would just encourage specifically any Black Bridgies to take classes in those departments and also all Bridgies to take classes in that department because it will lead you to a more specific path, if that makes sense. Um, but in terms of like what it takes to continue coming to work every day and continue kind of like pursuing these questions that I feel really excited about. It's all about feeding what I need to like nourish that work. So that looks like kind of what I was speaking about before, cultivating that courage to really embody the fact that like my life is valuable and the things that I think about, the things that I like put out into the world are inherently valuable. 
And that's something that I learned through being affirmed by my professors through like writing XYZ paper that I felt really excited about and a professor coming in and being like, you know what, let's talk about this. Like you clearly <laughs> have something that you want to work out. Like, let's talk about this. Um, and feeling also just that I like admired my professors so much felt really important to me too, because and this was a big difference in science class versus Africana studies classes. In science classes, it was all about executing. And I think I was like attracted to that path because I didn't actually have to make any decisions. It was like, here are the classes you need to take, get A's, here are the internships you need to get, get them, then take the MCAT and like, boom, 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 boom. And so I don't think I was actually encouraged to affirm myself at all outside of like what it meant to get a good grade. Whereas in my Africana studies department classes, I was really encouraged to like search inward and sit and like let those questions come up. And I had this kind of platform to answer them. Um, so I think, yeah, like finding your academic home is the most important thing you can do during your time at Smith, academically speaking. And that comes through experimenting. And Smith is a safe place to experiment academically and otherwise, like in terms of experimenting with the ways you want to inhabit the world, the ways that you want to be in community with other people. And I think the classes that I took in that department really served as a blueprint for me to figure out what it meant for me to lead this like creatively self-determined life. Because the other thing about Africana studies is that they're not only going to teach you like, here's Audre Lorde, here's Entozake Shange, here's Toni Morrison, here are these like pillars of black feminism. They're also going to teach you without you realizing that they're teaching you how to embody that in your own life. Like, what does it mean to hold contradiction? What does it mean to hold complexity and like ambivalence and like, understand that there's always going to be this kind of push and pull. Um, and I know that was kind of like abstract, but that's really how it feels. Um, is Africana studies taught me just like what it what wholeness means and what it means to bring that to the table. And so yeah, I think just like finding your academic home is the most rewarding thing that you can do during your time. And like the other thing is the open curriculum is a very unique thing and it does allow you to make these wild pivots of like i'm graduating in a year gonna pick an entirely new discipline and like do it um smith allows for that kind of like fluidity and this changing of your mind that i don't think is necessarily encouraged in other places where it's like you're a psych major for the rest of your life and like here's the path for you um smith allowed me to pivot and I think that that allows me to continue inhabiting this world that can be intimidating like any other industry or field for women of color.